Today we want to talk about painting foliage. How to paint leaves on the tree or leaves on the shrubbery. What's kind of the procedure? What are the things to think about as we're mixing color for foliage? And we're going to look at some paintings first of foliage by different artists and kind of assess what they're thinking about. This, uh, this is a painting by Willard Metcalf, late 19th century, early 20th century uh, American landscape painter. East Coast, American Impressionist, very strong color, a lot of small little brush strokes in here. While there's a lot of small brush strokes, he's really simplified what he's looking at. He's just choosing a small brush to get everything blocked in. But there's three things you want to think about. One is, well, the main thing I think is to simplify. How to simplify the shapes, values, and color. But Pick a color first when we're looking at trees. In this case, we're looking at orange, yellow, orange, orange, maybe some red, orange, red, violet, green, yellow, green, blue, green. So there's a lot of color there, but the key is to choose a color from the color wheel. Don't be outside painting and look at the foliage and just mix and mix until you think you've matched it. Have a color in mind and then modify it to fit what you're looking at. Same thing with photographs, especially with photographs, because the color's not very good. Pick a color from the color wheel and then modify it to fit the situation you're, you're looking at. So here, if I'm going with this tree here, I'm going to start with a basic yellow, orange, and an orange. Those are two colors from the color wheel. And if I have orange and yellow on my palette, fairly easy to mix. And then I want to think about how dark or light it is. That's how I suggest what the light is doing to the, the objects. Then I want to think about the intensity. How intense do I want that orange or yellow orange? Is it slightly muted or is it stronger without any kind of complement or, or modifying color in it to make it grayer? Or do I want it very, very gray and just a little bit of the local color in it? So a lot to think about, but if you simplify that process, it becomes a lot easier. So those three things, pick a color, get the value, and then the intensity. And again, he's got four or five different colors here, and he is using a smaller brush. But while using that smaller brush, he still has simplified the values. There's really only maybe two to three values in the light and maybe two values in the shadow of the foliage. It's another one by Metcalf here. All green this time, or what looks like green. But when I look at the colors in the shadows, I want a bluish green and then a lighter blue green. And those two shadow areas were some little bit of a yellow green. And then more yellow green and blue green in the trees that are in the sunlight. Blue green being the shadow. But there's some subtle changes within that yellow green. There's maybe some colors that are just a bit more green, a bit more blue-green maybe, but still, overall, it's more of a yellow-green. It's, it's warmer. It's suggesting the sunlight there, where the blue-green here, both values, the darker and the lighter, are really suggest the shadow. Colors in the shadow are cooler than the colors in the sunlight. It doesn't mean all the colors in shadow are always cold colors, cool colors. They're just cooler. So if I have orange leaves here, they're going to be in shadow. So they're going to be an orange and violet or an orange and blue to make that a cooler orange. But the subtlety, after you nail down the initial color, the dark and the light and how intense it is, making it the right value, there's some subtlety changes within there. And we'll talk about how to mix those here in a minute. This is another Metcalf, yes. And here we got yellow, green, and then green, and then a little bit of blue, green, and some of the lights. And then the shadows are just a darker green to blue, green. And I know at one point he used black. I don't know if there's any black in here or not, but the values are really good. And if you can have good values, good, simple composition, then just a little bit of color is all you need because it's the values and the composition that are going to make the painting work. 
But again, he's using smaller brush strokes here, apply the foliage, maybe putting the foliage on top of the sky because you can't get away with putting all that little bits of blue behind. So I, you know, whether this is a studio or outside, I don't know, or a little bit of both, smaller brush strokes to suggest the foliage. But with the small brush strokes, there's bigger, simpler shapes and simple values. If you keep everything simple, then you can use smaller brush strokes to suggest a bit more detail. So another Metcalf tree here, all in shadow, or all these trees are pretty much in shadow. And again, a subtle value change within the light Kind of a lighter green, a little bit darker green, and then the darkest green that puts it into deeper shadow. Again, the smaller brush strokes. But what are the color? There's some subtle color change here. That when I look at that green there, and then maybe the green there, there's a little bit of change, a little bit of difference. Difference in maybe using ultramarine blue and yellow as opposed to using viridian and yellow or ultramarine blue and cad yellow, as opposed to using ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. So there's a lot of variation, some different things to use. And again, when we get through this, we'll show some color combinations that make it a little bit easier. Now this is a painting by John Folensby. He was a early 20th century painter. I think he painted up into the 50s, maybe the 60s. But anyway, he was a student of John Carlson, painted outside mostly, had polio by the way, painted in a wheelchair but a lot of color variation. And here we're getting into more different intensities. So he's got some muted or grayed green. That's a yellow green, a little stronger yellow green. You can see that spot of yellow there, stronger yellow green. Here's some green with a little bit of alizarin crimson in it, which crimson is a red violet and yellow green and red violet are complements. So that's going to make it muted depending on how much you add to it. So he's got some muted yellow greens, but they're still warm and they contrast the darker, cooler green, blue, green, and just straight blue in the shadow. That really helps push that into the uh, shadow area, contrasting the warm, light yellow greens. And the reflections too, you know, same color down here, but darker and a bit more muted. You don't have anything down here as intense as some of these greens and yellow greens up in there. But the reflection is always a little less than. So the shadows and the reflection in the trees is not as dark or as light as what it's reflecting, which is kind of confusing. But the lights reflected in the water are a bit darker, and then the shadows are never as dark when they're reflected in the water. So the reflection was always less than the real thing. It's kind of like looking in a really bad mirror. Everything in a mirror that's not working well for whatever reason, everything looks a little less than. Otherwise, it looks like the exact same thing just below the tree instead of being reflected. This is also John Folensby. Here, probably blocking in the kind of reddish-orange and then breaking it up with a lot of sky holes. But here, the main color is yellow, yellow, orange, and red, orange in those leaves. So kind of a light, dark, a little bit of a half tone of those three colors using the background to really cut into it. So smaller brush strokes, but and then all the blue greens, blue, violet, violet in the color of the shadows of the grass and the shrubbery down below. Really nice coloring in that shadow and it contrasts so well the yellow, yellow oranges, red oranges in the foliage. This whole painting has a really bluish orange color scheme feel. So it's more complementary colors type of uh, color scheme that, that's really strong. It's very vibrant. Um, it's not a peaceful looking painting because of the complementary colors, the orange and the blue. If it was blue and blue green, it would be a little bit more peaceful, less, uh, less vibrating. This adds to that excitement of using the orange and the blue background. But a lot of colors, even though the basic color is orange, yellow, orange, and red, orange, there's violets, red violets, um, some green. So a lot of color variation. 
The key though, is that there isn't much value change. And if we look at this in a black and white like that, you can see there's the value of the sky is one value and the value of the trees is pretty much one value. There's some small little darks in there, but you can see there's not a lot of values, maybe three, four basic values in this whole area of the trees against the sky. It's not so much the value change as it is the color change. So the values are really basic, the light sky, the dark foliage. That's the whole key, the setup to the values. Then the color is what shows the variation. Now you see more lights with the strong yellow. A lot of color variation though, which makes it interesting, but not a lot of value change. So keeping the value simple, but you can um, add more color. Another Follinsby, I like his paintings. Also notice the real thick paint. If you want to learn about color, paint real thick because you can really see what color does when it's thick. When it's real thin, when you have a lot of paint thinner in it, or even a lot of medium in it, you don't really get the intensity of the color. Anything you add to color is going to break it down and it's not going to be as strong. And when I say strong, I don't mean highly saturated color. I just mean the full body color, not broken up by paint thinner. In other words, I can have a really gray color, put it on real thick, and it has a lot of strength to it. Whereas if I dilute that gray color with a lot of paint thinner, it's going to look kind of weak. So that's what I mean by intense or strong, is that it's not broken up with a lot of paint thinner or medium. It can get real messy when you paint this thick at first. So you're not used to painting this thick. You have to go dark to light, and gradually get your lights thicker. But you really learn a lot about color when you paint thick. Now, this is a Mill Klaus with a French painter. I mean, just after the French Impression, so not, not very well known, but a really good painter. You can see the foliage here. He's got the yellow, yellow green, green in the sunlit areas, and then more of a muted green, grayish green, green that's really been grayed with a complement, and some yellow green that's darker because there's a lot of light filtering through the foliage. And this is also, you know, using cad yellow or yellow ochre. In the shadow here, I might have some cadmium yellow with the blue, but I also have a lot of ochre. Whereas in here, I won't use as much, if any, ochre, because ochre is an earth color, yellow ochre, and it's gonna mute the color a little bit. So I want it more just cad yellow, a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit of viridian, just something in to make a yellow, yellow green. And then you can also add the complementary color on top if you want to gray the color, which is looks like is what he's done here. The, the more violets, probably to show more of the branches, but scrubbing some of this vi grayish violet, or it could be orange and blue, anything that looks real gray, that creates more grayish color. Scrubbing that on top of the green also mutes it as well as kind of suggesting the tinier branches. And then the real darker bluish green back in here, looks more like Viridian, muted, a little bit of burnt sienna, some kind of earth red, English red, lizard crimson, something to mute it just slightly, but really bluish green, green to yellow green that's darker and the green yellow green that's a lot lighter and more sunlit. Now this is uh, Ariad Randall Loomis. She was a, uh, I think she was late 19th century, early 20th century on the East Coast. But really nice landscapes and she handled trees really well. And in the fall, or this could be spring, the more yellow, yellow greens, pink, you know, kind of light, warm red, darker red, violet in the shadows. A lot of color variation. Even within just the green, he's got a green that's probably more ultramarine blue and cad yellow, or she and then has a green that's probably more viridian and a little bit of cad yellow. So just using the mixture green, using different bases, like using a viridian with yellow or an ultramarine blue with yellow, or even a phthalo blue or a cerulean blue with a little bit of yellow. And again, either a cad yellow, yellow ochre, and it'll give you a different, different type of green. And sometimes just mixing different greens just for the sake of variety is, is real important. 
Now here, there's not a lot of color variety. It's the same artist, Harriet Randall Loomis. And a lot of yellow green to green. Some of the greens are a lot more on the yellow, yellow orange side. And then the greens that are more on the bluish green side. Get any variation that you can use to create some subtle color changes is going to refine the painting quite a bit. We're not talking about grass, but there's a lot of nice color variation in here going from a light red, whether that red is white and burnt sienna, or white and alizarin crimson, and then white and yellow, green, a lot of subtle color change in there. And a lot of this color is added right on top. Start with one color that you think best represents the value, the light, the intensity, get that all filled in. Then what colors can you add to make it a little more varied, whether it's a little bit of a viridian, or a burnt sienna or orange, anything to get a different subtle color change in there. This is a TC Steel, Indiana painter. I was at uh, Indiana at a, wasn't a museum, it was an old house that had a huge art collection of the uh, Indiana painters, late 19th century, early 20th century, and just beautiful paintings. One of them had a lot of TC Steels. Of course, there's a lot of bear trees, not so much foliage, but a lot of yellow, yellow orange, yellow ochre, going to uh, red orange, red violet, violet, and the foliage in here, some green. A lot of times it's just the color variation. If you get the value right with the simple color, get the values right with simple color and intensity, then you can, as long as you don't change the value a lot, just change the color. So really strong blue, blue green in the background, blue violet, contrasting the really warm orange, red orange, and yellow orange foliage in there. Last one here was another Indiana painter at the uh, uh, House Museum, their collection. And this is William Forsyth. I think about the same time or a bit later than T.C. Steele, but a Indiana painter. And here everything is kind of backlit. The sky is real light real warm. Trees are upright and they're darker and cooler because they're in shadow, going from a very bluish, not even a blue-green, just a blue, to blue-green, to green. And then this really cool green in the foreground, just a different type of, of plant that gives you a different green. But this color here is the same as this back in here, just less white here and a bit more yellow. See a little bit of cad yellow, but it could be just a touch of ochre to get it basically slightly greener than back there. And then more cad yellow and blue up front. And when we think about greens, no matter what season it is, the main color I use to mix greens outside, no matter what the season is, again, is ultramarine blue and cad yellow. Because ultramarine blue is actually kind of a bluish violet. It has a little bit of red in it. And when you take cad yellow and add it to a blue violet, you're going to get a slightly muted green or yellow green. And it looks a bit more natural. Whereas if I use viridian, which is a real strong, or phthalo green, if I use that with cad yellow, it's going to look unnatural. It's going to really be so strong uh, and it's not going to look very natural. So I tend to use that. The viridian is just some accent colors. So most of these yellow greens in here are cad yellow, ultramarine blue. Then the stronger green here, which I come back later and add, is the viridian with a little yellow or phthalo blue with a little yellow. Sometimes I will use, I think this might be phthalo blue and yellow, but I added some burnt sienna into it to mute it. So it does look a bit more natural. But the viridian, the phthalo blue, phthalo green, if I use those, with yellow, they're just gonna be accents. You can see a little bit of it here. It's not a natural looking green. The ultramarine blue and cad yellow is a bit more natural. Now I can make it more natural by graying it down to burnt sienna, but I'd rather not have to gray it down. The ultramarine blue is already has red in it. So it's gonna mute that green a little bit. Now here are the colors I'm using for this painting. So here is, and I think this is phthalo blue. This is not the ultramarine. It might have a little ultramarine in it, but a little bit stronger. So ultramarine blue, cad yellow, and just mix them. 
And I, I try and go, I usually use a palette knife if it's a big painting and get real thick paint, blue gradually getting greener, gradually getting yellow. So I have about, you know, I have a yellow, yellow, green, green, blue, green. I've got four colors there. And I could pick any of those. No, I didn't mix very much. But then there's the orange down here. There's the cad yellow and there's cad orange and I'm blending them. And again, in here I have one, two, three is yellow, orange, then yellow, orange with a little green, and then the yellow, orange with a lot more green. So I got about four or five colors there as well. So about nine colors there. And if I'm using more paint, I can have a lot mixed up so I don't have to stop and remix all the time. Then generally I could have a burnt sienna, which I keep right down here, I think. Burnt sienna, get it the right value. If I want to gray the shadow, I get the burnt sienna this value and slowly add a little bit of it. Or I can get the burnt sienna this value, you know, add white to it, get it lighter, and then add a little bit in there to gradually mute it. Now, if I use ultramarine blue in the cad yellow, I don't need to mute it as much because the ultramarine blue has, again, a little bit of red in it. Here's the ultramarine blue. Getting it lighter, adding it to maybe a little bit of the Viridian. Here's the, this is the Viridian cad yellow. You can see how strong that is. That's really strong. And that's what I add to, you know, these accent colors in here that are a bit stronger. I don't want to start with those real bright colors. I want to block in the painting with the ultramarine and cad yellow light. A bit more muted, then I can add some of this. As long as it's the right value. And be careful with it because it'll take over your painting real quick and it'll look too garish. But I basically have, you know, the blue and yellow make my green, yellow, green, blue, green. And then the yellow and the orange gives me the orange, yellow, yellow, orange. And I can gradually mix that into the greens and get some subtle variations. Now, in this painting, I've got some um, aspens here, and I have the yellow, yellow with a little bit of orange. So this is actually a yellow orange, and I've got the palette here. So I've got the yellow and the orange. And again, if I gradually mix them together, get a lot of paint on there, I'm going to have an orange, yellow, orange, and then gradually getting more and more yellow. And then same thing with the greens. This is... Uh, it's still a thalo, I guess I didn't use ultramarine. But here's the green, yellow green, and more blue green in here. And this is the viridian and the yellow. And again, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five or six colors right there of just subtle color changes within those mixtures. And that's for these colors here. Using the burnt sienna to um, mute the yellow, also a little bit of violet to mute the yellow in the shadow. But the, I got the stronger Viridian and Cad Yellow here, the Thalo and Cad Yellow here. And again, a little bit of Burnt Sienna in that to mute it. Now this is backlit, so a lot of shadow, a lot of light filtering through these trees. So a lot of color variation. I basically have two values, maybe three, if we get rid of the color, we can see what values are there. So basically two values. I have a lighter shadow and a darker shadow. And I do have some sunlight on there, so I have three values. I'm just not seeing the sunlit uh, value change at all. So three values there. A dark, a lighter dark, and then a, some sunlight. So two darks and a sunlight. But within those colors, I've got I've got a lot of color variation here. I really wanted this to be as colorful as I could get it. And a little bit more, a little less colorful down here and everything else slightly more muted. But keeping the foliage up here really strong was the goal. And then my palette, starting with the greens, again, this, this is the ultramarine. The ultramarine blue, cad yellow. And here I've got the blue green, kind of green. 
yellow green and then i could add orange to that either directly on the canvas or on the palette i could mix it and have a orange kind of an orange yellow green orange green green so I, I, I try and see greens in terms of green, blue, green, yellow, green from the color wheel, but also an orange green or a violet green. Add a little violet to a yellow green and gives you an interesting color or a burnt sienna green. That, of course, that just gives you a muted green. Uh, but just think of what colors you can add to the right value and give it just a subtle color change. And lastly here, there within that, those greens, the ultramarine blue, cad yellow, the orange, and all these mixtures I can get with that, I'm also adding the violet. So ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Now I've got a deoxazine purple on my palette and I could use that, but I like to mix the violet with the ultramarine blue and the um, alizarin crimson. It just gives a, a bit more natural looking violet. And then having the orange here, Again, get it the right value, and of course, some white to get the right value of the violet. And I can I go from a red violet, a little bit lighter red violet, a little more violet, blue violet, blue, and then the red violet with orange, and then the orange. So again, a lot of color variations. And then I could add it to these, either on the palette a little bit. I don't have to mix it up totally as long as it's the right value. Or I can add the violets into the painting directly to the uh, canvas. And that's how I'm getting all those color variations. Some of the violets are down here too. But that's my palette pretty much for the greens and the blues and the yellows. I don't use any of the tubed yellows aside from viridian. And my viridian is a viridian hue, which is really just a phthalo green. So I use thalo green, ultramarine blue and thalo blue. And then the yellow ochre and the cad yellow and the orange and the burnt sienna. And again, everything. I can add the alizarin crimson, the violet. But uh, those are the three blues and greens and then the two yellows, cad yellow and yellow ochre. Again, the whole idea is to simplify what your thought process is and simplify your shapes and values, then the color becomes much easier, but it can get more, more complicated. But I hope that was helpful on uh, showing you how to mix color for foliage.